Hello. In part three, we're going to take an existing PsychoPy3 experiment and upload it onto the Pavlovia slash GitLab account that we created in part two. Let's start by taking a look at the experiment itself. So this is the folder that the experiment is contained in. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's only a PsychoPy experiment file and a conditions file. If I go ahead and open uh, this experiment in PsychoPy3, I can see that it's a simple lexical decision task that has a stimulus presentation, collects a key, uh, key response, and that's all housed within a loop that has, this should have four conditions. I'll just refresh this, there we go. So it's got four, four words total. So I just created this for the purposes of this video. Now, if we wanna take this experiment and upload it and run it on a, on a web browser, we need to create a version of this experiment that a web browser can understand. So the language that web browsers speak is JavaScript and HTML. Now, luckily, PsychoPy3 will do all of that work for us. So what PsychoPy3 will do, if I open up file here and go to export HTML, so this will take a second, but it's going to take all of the components that we've arranged in the builder window here and create a version of the experiment that's written in JavaScript and HTML. That's then going to be saved inside this folder. So now I'll go back and we can see that this new HTML folder has been created. If I open this up, we can see there's some JavaScript files here, HTML, and another resources file that contains a copy of that conditions file. So these are all the files that we need to run this experiment in the browser. Now what we need to do is take all these files and upload them onto GitLab where they're going to be stored. So to do that, the first thing I should do is log in. There we go. And once I'm logged in, it will show me a link to my GitLab account. I'll just open this. Now I'm going to want to have a look at this project. So I'm going to also sign in on GitLab. Sign in there. Okay, and if I go to my projects window, it should be empty. There we go, I have no projects here. So this is about to change. If I go back to PsychoPy, the way that I can communicate with that GitLab um, repository from PsychoPy is by using uh, this button here, the sync button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. When you click this, uh, PsychoPy is going to look through my GitLab profile and it's going to look for a project that has the same name as this experiment. Now it's not going to find one uh, and it's therefore going to prompt me to create a new project. So I'll click on this button. I'll give the project the same name as the local experiment uh, file and I'll designate myself as the owner. I could add a description and add some tags. I also have the option of making it public. Uh, I don't see any value in doing that at the moment. So I'll go ahead and create the project. This is now going to create a bridge using Git between my local folder and the repository online. Now what it's done now is it's taken all of the new files that need to get uploaded and kind of packaged them together into something called a commit. I get to now uh, give this commit a name I'm going to call it created project and this is going to help me keep track of all the changes that I've made to that repository over time. Um, I don't really need to create any other, I don't need to add any other details. Uh, it's pretty clear what's happening in this created project label. So I'll click OK. Now if I go into the local folder, I should see a couple of new changes. So this probably won't come up uh, if you're using your default settings on Windows. What you'll have to do is click on View and then uh, check Hidden Items. So once, uh, here, if I just demonstrate, uh, the Git folder will disappear. And if I click it again, it should reappear. There we go. So we can see this Git ignore uh, file that you can safely ignore. It's not gonna be that useful to you. Um, the important thing to note is that this Git folder has been created. So what this does it is establishes a secure connection between this local folder and the repository online. Now we can then use that connection uh, in video five. I'll show you how to use the git commands to take advantage of that connection to make changes uh, manually 
uh, using command prompt. The advantage of this is that um, I can connect a local folder on my computer with the repository, but we can also create other multiple connections with other people's computers and uh, similar folders on other computers uh, that can then all be connected into the same repository. So let's go and have a look at GitLab. Now I can see that a new uh, project has appeared here. If I click on that, um, I can see that it contains all of the same files as my local folder did. So it's got that HTML folder with all the JavaScript and the HTML and the resources. And if I go into the activity uh, for this project, I can see um, there's that created project um, commit. So this is all of the activity that's uh, been created so far on this project. So let's just double check to make sure this project is appearing on our Pavlovia um, account. So if I go to Pavlovia here and I'll sign in, I'm already signed in. Uh, if I go to my experiments window, uh, this should come up. Let me just refresh the page and there we go. So you can kind of see, so this is kind of like the public face of your experiment. If I click on this, I have some different options. So I can select piloting. If I have uh, tokens associated with my account, I can also start uh, running it. Um, at the moment, I don't have any uh, credits, sorry, to, uh, to run the experiment, but it also gives me this here, which is the uh, unique URL. So this is kind of like the home of my experiment online. So if I want participants to be able to access this experiment, I'm going to send them uh, this URL here, and they can access this from any computer um, as long as they have a web browser. Now, I just want to make sure everything's working, so I'm going to go back over to the piloting uh, version. Uh, this will allow me to kind of test run the experiment myself without using any credits. So I'll click on this pilot button, and this should run my experiment. So I'll just type in my name and my age and get going. And there's only four words, so I'm going to answer yes. This is, in fact, a word. That's not. This is, and that's not. And it generates my uh, results uh, locally. So it's just going to save this onto my uh, downloads rather than being uploaded onto the repository. Uh, and that's what happens when you're running something in piloting mode. And there we go. That's the data output for that um, experiment. So it seems like we've successfully uploaded the experiment online. Everything's working and I'll see you in the next video.